how we could use uh, intellectual curiosity to cure and resolve the African problems. Uh, how we use, uh, how we can use, you know, intellectual curiosity to resolve Africa's problems. And um, okay, but how was the? Who, who, anybody would like to comment on the session that uh, uh, that that had, uh, success held? Were you blessed? Were you? Did you get anything? Were you impressed? Anybody would like to comment? No. Is it on? Yes. No, okay. Nobody wants to comment now. I thought you wanted to say something. Patience. Ah, okay. Yeah. Um, for me personally, I learned that for us to be creative, we have to first of all uh, fight against the fear, the fear of starting something, being afraid that you are going to fail, you are not going to succeed because that press us down sometimes. Sometimes you have an idea to start something, but because you are thinking, how is it going to be? Maybe I will not succeed. Then you don't even just start it at all, and then that will suppress your goal. You will never reach your goal. You will never be creative. And also about the environment you live in, maybe people comment that all these things, they believe yeah, that we have to just focus and try even if you fail, you try and try and try again because failure doesn't mean you will not be successful in future. It's only taking you to another way of doing it. That's what I understand. Beautiful, beautiful. All right. Okay, okay for me, what was striking about the session was that I would only be remembered for the products that I create Beautiful. after I've left this world. You know, we went, we went down memory lane of our grandparents and great grandparents, and most of us didn't even have their names. And for me, that was really striking. You know, it tells me that after generations, after now, if I'm gone, if I don't have anything to be remembered for, I'll be just like them. Why, why, why wouldn't, why, 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 why wouldn't you be remembered if you give back to children? Because I'm someone's great granddaughter today, and I don't <laughs> even know their names. <laughs> yeah. I don't even know their names. I don't remember who they are. Yes, you were saying why my children, or I said because I'm someone's great granddaughter, or you know, I, I'm following other generations of people that I don't even it know even their count. names. I know, I don't. <laughs> so, <it's not> <laughs> <laughs> so the same will be, be my story. So, so the story. craze in your country, Nigeria, to get married, have children, is only a craze, eh? It's only a craze, you know. I've been trying to speak up about it. And, of course, you know, women are the people that have this as a problem. And, um, yes, I have my own kids today. But this um, se um, uh, meeting, this program, this session is still a reminder and a challenge to me that if I don't have any products, you know, that the world or any um, invention that I'm leaving for my world or any problem, or solution I'm offering to my world, I'm as good as not even existing. Yeah. Even if you have 20 of them. Yes. <laughs> yeah, um, for me, she just mentioned one of the um, thoughts I took. But one, the first thing that struck me was when he said that um, the responsibility of a generation actually falls on the shoulder of a few people to bear the burden, mm, baka, baka, sakala, bear baka, the burden of that generation. And it yes. don't mean that the fact that we are privileged to be listening to what, the, the fact that um, we are privileged to be listening to what we are listening to, hearing the kind of stuff we are wearing, and the fact that it is just very few people nowadays that are listening to the quality of the words that we're hearing, it means that responsibility is falling on us, whether we like it or not. So what, whatever we decide to do, 
with what we have heard, we, uh, I think posterity we will determine um, if we actually made good um, use of what we have of what we have heard. And um, something he said again, which was really was kind of funny but very real, was when he said, "Whoever is not creative is not thinking." So that's, that's, that is profound. Yeah. So basically, if you think you are a thinking person, like I said the other day, and you are not producing anything, test of uh, knowledge is what <laughs> your your result. So if you think you are you are a creative person, but uh, you are a thinking person, but you've not created no anything, product, no product to show, it just goes to show that you're actually not thinking. And if you're not thinking, it shows that you're not actually asking quest questions because the two go hand in hand. And um, he also said uh, to, to live in the heart which you leave behind is not to die. If, he said, if, if it's not to die, if not, you are dead and gone and forgotten. So and the only way you can live in the heart of the people you leave behind That's right. is, to, is to actually touch their heart by the problems you are able to provide a solution to. And that's why today we celebrate so many men that we never knew hundreds and uh, uh, centuries way back. Why? Because they touched our lives and they are still touching our lives till today. Mm -hmm. Like you mentioned, the Thomas Edison, the fact yeah. that we are sitting here with lights enjoying it. <laughs> the guy is still touching our lives even though he's gone. Even though he's but gone. like she said, some of our grandparents, great grandparents, we don't even know them. We don't even know they existed. We don't even know they existed. Why? Because they just came, they lived, and they died. So at the end of the day, our lives are actually... Um, uh, let me just read the way he said because it was so beautiful. Um, he talked about um, um, that... Um, sorry, one minute. Yeah, he said... Um, Microphone. Yeah, okay. He said um, the, the man that is truly miserable in life it's not one without a child, it's not a man without a job, it's not a man without a car, a building, or whatever, but a man that failed to leave a product, or a man that failed to live for purpose, a man that failed to identify a problem in his generation and provide a solution it. to that problem. So, Beautiful. Uh, I, I just want to add to that. Um, yeah, for for parents, you know, there is that tendency to to want to say that you're living for your children, you know, and that to me is is mundane, you know, because a lot of people today they are married and all they are striving for is that they want to have a child of their own. Mm -hmm. So we are supposed to live our lives for much more than that. If all I have lived for my, you know, in this world is for my children, you know, it means I don't even understand why mm -hmm. I'm here. So, so it's so centrism. Yes. Yeah, so the, the, the product that we're talking about is part is of is part of paganistic worldview. Yes. And the paganistic worldview, you see God because you want personal benefit. You want him to either bless you, to give you what to, to eat, to bless your children, to protect your family, for you not to you know to die. You know, that is paganism. It's uh, it's uh, living for the flesh, living for yourself. Yes, so the solution, um, the products we are focusing on should be for the world, what, you know, the world will remember us for, not just for our family, you know, for our children and for our immediate... Um, and the only way to do that is to live for the kingdom or to live for others. Yeah. Those are the main, two main ways to, to live uh, your legacy for time and eternity. Yeah, well, the message meant to me was he using the scripture when Jesus said that um, go ye uh, Jesus he uses the uh, scriptures that Jesus goes out every day to be a blessing mm. and that's, that's one of my priority anyway in life and I won't say I've achieved it, but I tried. In you are living area by that because, principle. Yeah, mm. by that principle. And I don't just want to come here on that, not touching people's life. I want to make an impact. I want to touch as many as possible. 
Beautiful. Because that's Jesus' commandment. Excellent. Thank you. Give to. Oh, you want to say? Okay. Can, second person. If not, you can give it to Chris. Okay. Right. If you want to say something, you can. If not, then give it to. Hmm? I believe. Right. I believe the reason why we're all here is so that we could get inspiration how to to go out there and be creative and to change. Stand up, stand up. They want you to stand up. To go out there and to be creative and to change our world because there is need for creativity. People are, you know, they keep dying with a lot of, you know, things in their heart, like dreams. And all that just goes away through the grave, you know, to the grave. And feeling to be creative. While all, all of us have the ability of being creative. And also one thing else I got is that your will to be to be creative you must be greater than your skill. Good. Yes. Your will to be creative must be greater than your skill. It doesn't matter what, what skill you have, but if, as long as if you don't have that dream, if you don't have that drive to be creative, I don't think you can achieve anything and as it, much. And it is that we will and wish that drives you to go and get the skills that are needed, right? Mm -hmm. Beautiful, beautiful. Okay, um, personally, I just want to take one point he said. It's just like a wake-up call for me when he said, each day when you're not creative, you are being irresponsible, you know. We have a whole lot of things we want to do each day. We allow problems and a whole lot of things to overwhelm us and we don't do anything towards Especially it. vanity. Yes, yeah, overwhelm you and you don't do anything. Now when he now likened it to the life of a dog, what does dog do? Wake up, <laughs> wants, wants to eat, <laughs> wants to bark, you know. Now he took me back to the church. When they are asking you to come and give testimony, they will just say to you, no matter how small the testimony is, come and say it. A majority of people will say, uh, at least I, I have life today. I, I slept and I woke up. And you know, every dog slept and they woke ah. up also. You, know, you understand? Uh, so when you're not being creative, you're just being responsible <laughs> like that dog. So it's a wake up call for me. Because they are using those testimonies yeah. to actually recruit new members, new slaves. Yeah. Felix, yeah. Good day, sir. I think uh, today's uh, section was, it's not really that it's an eye-opener because I believe most of us know about them, only that uh, we don't want to accept the reality of mm. it. Mm. And more so considering, even over the years, even from the scripture, uh, I remember there was uh, a, an incident in Matthew where Jesus told uh, the uh, it was, they said it's a war version of the scripture about Chorazin, about uh, yes. Seda. Mm -hmm. But he's actually telling them that if what they are hearing today was told to those people, mm -hmm. they would have repented, mm -hmm. they would have been better people mm -hmm. for, our, for their generation. Mm -hmm. And this is actually also the same thing for our generation. Most of us have been hearing this, but then what happened? What did we do? What did we do with them? Yeah, that's the question. And what are we going to do with them? Even from this conference, this meeting that we are having, after we've heard of of all this, what are we going to do with them? Right. Someone else says, if you want to know about missed opportunities or lost talents, go to the graveyard. Yeah. You will see a whole lot of missed place priorities mm. that are lying there and unfortunately we are still not learning thank you sir. beautiful beautiful thank you so oh, yeah okay we are going to start this evening class now and uh and the the teaching is going to be of course we are continuing the session we are doing in hmt Please go and share the message if you have not yet shared it. Share, share, share. Go share the message with your friends. And don't worry, they say Nigeria is playing football today. We are going to finish on time, okay? <laughs> We're going to finish on time for you to go and watch your soccer. So 
be around right now. Uh, with, with the, the HMT is called the Art of Questioning, and then we are going to uh, the topic of today of this evening right now. This session is called Intellectual Curiosity: A Key to African Development. Now, before I no, don't let me do that because we have talked already. So let me. I wanted to say before I go on, will you? Can you try to? Um, can you try to at least in your mind? Can you try to see the connection between uh, the early mor the morning session, which is uh, world view? Yeah, so world view and how to come out of that world view. I mean, how to come out of our paganistic world view, the world view that is, in, you know, invaded Africa right now. How do we come out of there to build a country that is going to be truly developed and to develop, even be, besides the country, to even develop and deliver our people from the captivity, from the slavery, from the bondage of deception, ignorance, superstition that people are in right now. So how do we bring our people out of this? What connection can you build? What bridge can you build before, between that co continuation, right? That, uh, that uh, worldview and the, our our uh, our HMT now, and which the top first topic is going to be intellectual curiosity, a key to African development. Try to think about it, but you might not need to talk, but think about it. If, if you get an answer for yourself, it will help you. Before I begin to give the answer, provide the answer. Now I would like to take your mind back to the video that I showed towards a new Africa. Just take your mind. No, we are not going to watch it. We are not going to watch it now. But just take your mind to remember the video that we watched where I was talking about four things that must be corrected, that must be uprooted in our psyche, in our, from our society, before we could en uh, enjoy what it means to be developed and to be civilized. So uh, when you see that video, you see that they are all connected. Those four things to be uprooted are all connected to our worldview. So it is the worldview of a people that determines how they behave, why they behave the way they behave. That is where you could understand their state of the economy, why they are not being developed. That is, it is because of their worldview that will give you the explanation why the economy is not growing, why the country is not growing, why do people behave the way they behave, why do they... You know, why are they the way they are? It is the worldview that is going to help us to understand why Lord Lugard will say those things about who we are and things like that. So it is the worldview. So now, how do we correct a worldview? Remember that the worldview that, unfortunately, our continent uh, has embraced historically is the paganistic worldview. And that worldview, because it basically and primarily totally depend on, depends on the celestial power or terrestrial power. And that celestial or terrestrial is always spiritual, spirit realm. And because it is the spirit realm that decides everything anyway, over the years, there had not been the need for our people to be curious. Because your curiosity will not lead you anywhere because... Even if you are curious, you will not do anything because it is what the gods and the fathers and the ancestors and the deities decide that will happen. And it is only, uh, so either you desire or you don't desire, it doesn't matter. You are just supposed to pass your time here on earth <laughs> and be ready to go and meet your fathers. And you also will become an ancestor that your great children and grandchildren will be praying to. So our continent, therefore, had been deprived of not curiosity, but intellectual curiosity. But, but this, is not just, uh, this is not just particular to, to, to Africa. Do you know that even in Europe, the function and the functionality of the brain or the mind was only discovered in the 18th century. Brain was only discovered less than 200 years ago. Brain. 
Because you know why they couldn't discover it before then? Because even in Europe too, Catholic Church religion was in control. And what they were also believed, because Catholic Church is also the same paganism. And what they also believe that God alone, no, don't touch it. All. If you question anything in Catholic Church, a few people heard of Inquisition. Yeah. <laughs> that is because of people questioning. <laughs> if you question anything, they will, they will burn you alive in the stake. Or throw you in the petrol, in the drum. <clears throat> That's because people question things. So Christians and even religion has done horrible things to the world just because people question things. And because they were not questioning, they couldn't even discover that man had brain. Brain was only discovered about 100 and something years ago. Less than 20 years ago. Less than 200 years ago, sorry. 18th century. You know, it's unbelievable that, ah, you mean this whole world, all this development is only about 200 something years? Ah, and that is because people couldn't question before then. <laughs> So, so in Africa, we, you don't say, we shouldn't think that things are hopeless. If 200 years ago, even Europe was still backward, uh, and thanks to the Renaissance, everything changed, we could also bring about our own Renaissance. We can bring about the transformation, the, 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 the change or in our people. Because if we can change the worldview of our people, if we can change the mentality, the value system of our continent, and then we are going to be able to uh, bring them to a place whereby they will be able to, you know, build for themselves a greater future. So now once the, that generation of the Renaissance, Renaissance people, once they were able to uh, make Europeans to begin to think and to begin to have intellectual curiosity, that changed everything. Then the next generation of Europeans, they totally... Uh, you know, develop, brought about civilization and developed the the whole continent. The whole, you know, and the and the world also became developed thanks to them. So, uh, so what we need to therefore start with delivering our people is to start with this, uh, with this uh, principle of intellectual curiosity as a key to African development, and it should be a subject in all our universities. It should be a subject in all our primary school, secondary school, everywhere, so that our people don't keep on looking for jobs. Why are our people looking for jobs? It's a proof that the, the society is void of intellectual curiosity. Our people are not built in that culture. We don't have the culture of intellectual curiosity. So what is curiosity? We know what curiosity is. But intellectual curiosity, in one word, if you want to say it in a simple word, is the passion and the innate desire that is you know that a person that pushes a person to want to discover or research discover or research so the passion can you imagine even 10 percent of our country let them just be researchers to want to discover ah uh -uh. we will discover how to do everything okay well, I'm going to let uh, uh, Chris Epos read now. And uh, so we're going to, so intellectual curiosity is the topic, a key to African development. Yes, yes, please. In order to see Africa become a developed and civilized society, in order to see Africa become a developed and civilized society, we must cultivate intellectual curiosity in our people. Formal education has not brought a desired progress and developed. Developed. And, and development. developed. And development. Okay, and developed. Formal education has not brought a desired progress and development. Yeah. In my opinion, self-education is the answer to African development. Now, so this, this particular truth here, can you imagine that in Africa, you know, I don't know if you would know, yesterday we were, I mean on Sunday, we were speaking about this uh, Kelvin Doe guy, boy, in uh, uh, Syria alone, who was at 12 years old, discovered a way to build his own radio station Be by just going to the trash and garbage uh, site and digging out the, the, the garbage and then he used it to build his radio station. Then he discovered that radio station needs power, power. Uh, you know, to, and he built his own power station 
from nine years old to 12 years old boy. Yes, and another boy in Malawi, when he was just 12 years old, he was, he couldn't, he was either chased out of school, he couldn't, pay for, couldn't go to school, he went to the library, saw a book about electricity, different how to create electricity, found that one of them is called wind energy. He, he you know, started building it just by reading because he had to finish primary school, but he couldn't go to secondary school. So, and I'm saying, what about formal education? Our people are having formal education. In Nigeria, we have university teaching engineering, teaching science, teaching physics, teaching all these things, and we are still lacking electricity. We are 12 year old boys, nine year old boys are able to just go by themselves reading textbooks. So, what are you engineering? What are you reading? Formal education is what has been introduced to us. But formal education has been introduced to us as a way out. And that's the question you asked yesterday or to, you know, that today. Okay, that formal education, as if, if you just go and get a degree. Degree doesn't, if, we have, if your mind has not been stimulated, you will just go through the process. You know, I don't know, uh, you, know you talk to any of, of these, my uh, assistants here, my team members. You know, either it is Dr. Success or Anu or Victor, they will tell you that it is when they got to know Pastor Sunday that their education started. I think all of you can say that. You know, it doesn't matter what you finish. Because when I meet all these so called graduates, medicine, and all the, I think they are not educated. I think they didn't go to school. I said, Did you go to school? They said, I'm finishing medicine now. I said, I don't can't believe it. Because people are going through the process. I said, And you pass why and jam, all those things. He said, Yes. People are not stimulated, but because the best education is always self-education. It is that boy, Kelvin, that yeah, 12 years old, build a station, radio station and uh, electricity, is curious, intellectual curiosity. He went to the trash box. He didn't wait for import. He didn't wait for brother or relative to send something from America. He didn't wait, trash, I mean, dump, you know, garbage dump. He went there and started looking for things, trash, that people threw away. Built a radio station and then built a, a electricity supply for it and then for his own family and everything like that. Then the other boy in Malawi, he went there, you know, and he went to just use plank. And then he used as uh, the uh, bicycle something, the bicycle little engine. That's, for, is, is, that's what is used to power the... The plank, a boot plank, that the sawmill plank, put it, and then there's something in the middle, and provided wind energy. And we are doing graduates. I am engineer. In Nigeria, they like the title, engineer, mm. <laughs> <laughs> doctor, so architect, oh, oh, empty head, <laughs> empty head. And we are going about going with degree because it is not formal education. Formal education has not developed Africa. Formal education has only helped us to look for white collar jobs. That is why we must now introduce another uh, another concept of education to our people, which is the education that is born out of desire, out of passion, out of your own desperation, out of pushing yourself. Out of foresight, out of uh, African girls, P powered generator racist questions. These are Nigerians, right? Yeah, the Nigerian girls, they were able to do uh, through P, through urine. They also created generator, a generator through. I put it on my, it's on my blog as well. Yeah, so. So anyway, but what I'm saying is that people go to university and they cannot do these things. And these are high school students that were able to do that. So, um, what, you know, so, but it, it, it started from intellectual curiosity. And that is the thing that, you know, I finished university and I finished the best of my class. But you know what? What I know today is only about 2% that I got from university and, oh yeah, all schooling. So 98%, they didn't come from those schools in the university. They came from self-education. That is what would develop Africa. But we must make people to be so enthusiastic about developing themselves. We must make people to be so... Mm, you know, in Europe and America, even in the UK, you know, the white people, they don't go to university so much. Oh. Yeah. They only go to do 
specialization or technical skills or the courses. They call them courses, professional courses. Skills is what they're after. Skills, not degree. Uh, yeah, the politicians who do, yes. But ordinary people, the people who power the economy, the people who, upon whose shoulders, they just rise through the rank and become anything they want to become. They go for skills. But we go for university education now, we cannot do anything after that. We don't have skills, we have big head. So, edu so you know, formal education has let us down. Let's read. In order to see Africa become a developed and civilized society, we must cultivate intellectual curiosity in our people. Formal education has not brought a desired progress and development. In Yes. Formal education has not brought a desired progress and development. In my opinion, self-education is the answer to African development. However, self-education is only possible through intellectual curiosity. Intellectual curiosity by itself is based on the act of asking questions. <laughs> now we got into where, why we are doing this HMT and why this will be able to resolve Africa's problem. You remember that in the worldview that we have, the African worldview right now, you don't ask questions because everything depends on God. Mm -hmm. So are you going to ask questions from God? Are you going to question God? <laughs> so that whole mindset of not questioning is coming from that worldview because it is in the paganistic worldview you don't question God because everything depends on God. So if you question God, you are going to die or thunder will come and strike you or some strategy will Tra strategy, I mean, tragedy will come. You don't question God. So today, in the, today's Christianity, which is the total opposite, God is saying, bring out your arguments. Bring out your proof. Come, come and, you know, you, know, and, you know, present your case. You know, God is totally the opposite. When people were even going to Jesus and asking him, ah, what about that parable? Ah, I don't understand. You know, these things are no more in Christianity. This is what Christianity is about. Because Christianity is knowledge-based. You go to, you know, the whole book of the Christian, of the Bible, Proverbs, it's just knowledge, wisdom, understanding. Knowledge, wisdom, understanding. But in paganism, that it, knowledge, wisdom, and understanding is, um, is played down. You don't need knowledge. You don't need wisdom because the gods are the ones who decide. So here, and then he has the favorite. He has his favorite that he picks. You know, the, the chosen ones, the anointed ones. So you don't need that. So that is what these, our so-called geos, who say they are Christians, that's what they are practicing now. So they play down on you, you know, through, through intellectual. They say, you are secular, secular knowledge. No, you have to be spiritual, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know. And then to be spiritual, you have to depend on them because they are, you are not there when you, they were anointed. So it is, so it is paganism, and you call, that also, also the culture of don't question them. Because if you question them, it's as good as questioning God. So all those things are paganistic practices. We don't have Christianity at all. All these things they are calling Christianity is paganism. Because it's in paganism you don't question, because you don't question God. So now, they are now saying you can't question them. Just like in paganism you can't question God. So they are now the gods that you cannot question. They are the deities. But that's why to resolve Africa's problem, we have to set the mind free first. Because they have captivated our minds through religion. They have captivated our mind through culture. They have captivated our minds through even culture now. You know our culture is that you don't question elders. Yeah. It's not just church. Yeah. So if you question an elder, right. the culture itself is paganistic. Yeah. And you don't question politicians. So you don't question anything. Everything is paganistic. So until we set free the minds of our people the, through questioning, through curiosity, we will not set our nation free. That is why this art of questioning HMT and this number one topic of um, intellectual curiosity. Of course, you know that I still have two messages on the worldview, but I just cut it short because I still have 30, 30 I mean, 60 uh, slides in one and 60 slides in another, part one, part two. But I just jump in because I, would just, I know that you got the whole idea in general. And, and uh, so, but intellectual curiosity is the beginning. We have to challenge people to love self education. Now, what, is intel what would intellectual this, uh, curiosity lead you to? Intellectual curiosity will lead you to the culture of self-education. Now, mm. if I tell you now, if I ask you, 
If I come to the street of Nigeria or Ukraine or London and say, tell me five most important things in, in life, they will say, most likely, family. Some people will say children. Some will say money. Some will say health. Some will say God, if you go to Africa. Some will say education. Or what else would they say? Five most important things in life. So, so most of the things. But none of those are the most important things in life. Let me tell you one thing that is more important than God. <laughs> that is more important than believing in God. Than having faith in God. One thing that is more important than having faith in God. That one thing also is more. <laughs> that one thing also is more important than having children. This one thing is more important than having a wife or a family. This one thing is more important than having good health. It's more important than all those things you have mentioned. It's more important than money. You know what that thing is? Asking questions. Now, you tell me why asking questions is more important than believing in God. Because if you don't know that asking questions is more important than believing in God, you will be born in a Muslim family, for example. And because you don't ask questions, and asking questions has not become a culture to you. Because what, has been, what is the culture to you is that you must listen to your parents. You must follow the religion of your culture. You are born in a Muslim country, or you are born in a Muslim family. So you cannot question your father. You cannot question your religion. Because you cannot question it. You cannot ask questions if you are in the right religion or not. Therefore, you will become a terrorist. Because they will tell you, uh, because our religion demands that you must go and kill somebody before, you know, to really prove that you love you know, Allah or God. So you go and do it because you don't ask questions. But if you are born in a Muslim family or a Christian family or a Muslim, or, or, or Catholic family or whatever family or a paganistic family, but if you know to ask questions, you'll be able to say, how can my God, this God, be saying I should go and kill somebody? I have questions. Yeah. It's because people are not asking questions. That's why they are religious. So it is more important, the act of asking questions itself will prevent you and save you from believing in the wrong God. It is the act of asking questions that will bring you to the knowledge of the right God. No, you probably don't get it. Yeah. 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 You get it? Eh? Yeah. And it will prevent you from becoming a doorman. The, the one that we're having in Africa right now. Why is it that all the churches in Africa are just slave, slave camps? They have made our people into, we have lost Christianity and our people didn't even realize it because they couldn't question. If they could take you, take questioning from you. If they could take questioning from you. If they could take questioning from you, you would become a slave for free. In fact, for, no, Dobra won, was a voluntary slave. Now you go to go work, work out go there for that slavery with your own leg. <laughs> <laughs> You yourself, you'll be surrendering like this without a shot. Nothing will be fired. Because they have taken the, the just most potent instrument from you. The ability to question. So because you cannot question anything that is being done, you are just a mumu and a zombie. You just come there and you are just submitted. It doesn't matter what university you finish. If you finish all university in the world, you cannot question. You are as good a slave as any, anything can enslave you. The church will enslave you, the pastors will enslave you, the Jews will enslave you, the culture will enslave you, the society will enslave you. You are just a nobody, you are not a human yet. <laughs> what makes you human are two things. The art of questioning or reasoning is the same thing. Questioning or reasoning or, and, and number two, the ability to live by the principle of cause and effect. Those are things that make you a human. Because you are thinking until you think you are not human. You are animalistic. You are a biomass. That is what they are, they, when they take, that's what you become. When they take from you the ability to question. So, intellectual curiosity. So, what, what, when they say, I am attacking the bishops and the geos and the pastors in Nigeria, and they say, why don't you do another style? You know, okay, what Pastor Sunday is saying is correct, but his style, what did, what did they say, his method, his approach. Or his method is wrong. He's, you don't question an elder. You don't challenge elders. You don't. His approach is wrong. But I'm doing this approach like that intention. But don't mention them. Please don't mention them. Everybody is coming to go. Please, I beg you, don't mention them. Please, because of God, don't mention them. I said, no, no, no. I'm doing intentionally. Why? I want to uh, break 
the slave, the shame. Not to challenge or a question. I want to break that, not just in myself, I'm already, I'm already free, but in other people in the whole world, that these people can be questioned. I am doing it intentionally to set the captives free. Because if I could beg that, that these people could be questioned and I will not die. These people will be questioned and you, nothing will happen. When you know that people could be questioned, you are setting free to begin to look for intellectual curiosity. They will begin to ask questions. That is what I am doing. I am going far beyond just mentioning names. I am strategic in doing what I am doing. So intellectual curiosity is the ability to set people free to ask questions. So that's number one thing that is more important than having children, more important than believing in God. Because if you have children and you didn't ask questions before you have children, that's why most of us are still where we are today. Yeah. You think your father has questions? Ah. You think your mother has questions before he brought you to the world? Some of you are even have accused your parents about that long time. Now, why do you even give back to me, Sam, if you are not, are not ready? Because animalistic instinct. They, were, they didn't ask questions. But if you get to a place where you begin to question yourself, what does it mean to have a child? Who is a child? What should be my attitude to a child? Who, what, what does it mean to be a mother, a father? Who is a, Until you ask questions, it is the children you give birth to will become your headache, your biggest tragedies in life, and your regret. They will be regretting, you will be regretting. So asking questions is more important than having children. And asking questions is more important than marriage. Yeah. Because if you don't marry, you not know, I mean, don't ask questions, you don't know how to treat a woman. You'll be thinking she's the same like you. <laughs> then when your opinions begin to clash, you'll be saying, ah, oh, to you, I married the right, wrong, wrong wife. Or I think all oh, the girls have led me to the wrong. No, no, it's because you are foolish enough not to ask questions before you even get set up to marry. If you don't ask questions, questions are more important than children. Questions are more important than wives. Questions are more important than husband. Questions are more important than food. Because if you don't, if, for example, if you don't ask questions, you think this is water, and you will not know that it is acid. You just pour, and pour it and drink. <laughs> <laughs> Questioning. That's why even questioning is more important than faith in God, having faith in God. Because if you don't question before you put your faith in God or trust in, another, in any God, you will believe the wrong God. You think that, why do you think people believe in Buddhism? Or why do you believe that people in India honor cows and pig more than human beings? <laughs> because they will not question. Because that's where they found themselves. Why do you think that in my country, the whole people is going to church every Sunday as if they are, you know, they are zombies? And their pastor will tell them, well, if you don't pay your tithe, you are going to hell. They don't even question. Ah, that I thought Jesus died, God, God, I will not go to hell. Oh. <laughs> That's why your bishop will be slapping you in the mystery of the Sabbath, and you just said, I God gave him revelation. He might know why he slapped that. <laughs> but I will not question. You know, if they could push you under that canopy of never questioning anything, you are the you have not become a human yet. What makes you human is the act of questioning and act of reasoning. Or act of irreasoning, then reason in the line of uh, you know uh, cause and effect. So, out of no, the, the intellectual curiosity, desire to know, we must cultivate it in our people. Right. Maybe somebody who is listening to me today, maybe God will just give you this topic as your own topic. Yeah. You just start a movement just to cultivate intellectual curiosity in people. Just to wake up the mind, the consciousness of people. Wake up people's consciousness. Then we will come alive. Question everything. If you have children eh, who are studying in UK or in Europe or in Ukraine, you will see that questioning everything has been put in their system from primary school yeah, to university. Yeah, I tell you that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They know that is the key to development. So even the students themselves might not know. But if you notice very well, you will discover that your children become rebellious little by little by yeah. the time they come home. They don't want, just want to listen to you and swallow everything like that again. And you'll be thinking your children are rebellious. No. They are being human. But you, because you were brought up in a place where you shouldn't be human, you are now thinking you are having problems, that your children are bad. But that is what is right. Make, please make you read. Desire to know. <laughs> the intellectual, curious person has a deep and persistent desire to know. That is what we want to get for our people. Everybody, can you imagine a place 
when people don't go to school to get a job, when people don't go to school because of employment, but just the desire to know. Ah! It's just like I have people in my place here now. They went, they came here to study medicine. I said, why? Because that is the most prestigious. I said, ah. <laughs> Now, all of them who came here for medicine, they are now doing their different things. Everybody is looking for it. They now want to discover themselves. Okay? The intellectual, curious person has a deep and persistent desire to know. She asks and seeks answer to the why questions. Yes, because it, that is a proof that you are curious intellectually. You want to know. Can you imagine if we put this in our program from primary, secondary school? Everybody just wants to discover. Researches will grow up. People will be not be going to churches and be sitting there for six weeks, two weeks, three weeks. They will be going to the library laboratories to discover to do research ah! can you imagine if a whole country of 100 million people will be sitting down in libraries and laboratories ah, ah. it must become a culture we must be this a culture among our people i want to talk to you about what i consider to be the key core the, the key cog in being satisfied and the critical part of staying interested and engaged in life. It is also the key to self-development and national emancipation. It is called intellectual curiosity. Intellectual curiosity is a key in being satisfied and a critical part of staying interested and engaged in life. Not through religion, but we are using religion to fulfill all that. But once you, you know, hang on religion, that becomes paganistic. Why? Because you'll be depending on God to provide solution for what he created you for. You will now be looking forward to God to do for you what he created you for in the first place for you to do for yourself. Or what he has already done. You become, you make yourself a, a disabled. When you just like waiting on God like that perpetually. He said, God, heaven is heaven belongs to God. But the earth he has given to the sons of men. It is also a key to self-development and national emancipation. This intellectual curiosity is a key to national emancipation, not just of Nigeria, but Africa as a whole. Okay, the definition. Intellectual curiosity is a term used to describe one's desire to invest time and energy into learning more about a person, place, thing, or concept. How, you know, how, we, cannot, we cannot emphasize this enough. If from primary school, you know the desire that has been cultivated in our people, now everybody must go to church, go to church. What about if you desire to go and know, discover yourself, what you are called to do, who you are, who are you, you know, and all that that is being cultivated in people. Okay. The important thing is not to stop questioning. Curiosity has its own reason for existing. You know who said that? Albert Einstein. Albert Einstein. Now, Albert Einstein, the greatest mind of our age that has ever lived, says that the most important thing is not to stop questioning. But what did they do to us in Africa? They stopped us from questioning. Bakuro koko babaka bababaka gagagabaka. Jagalu kudu kuru kudu kudu. Makada kada buku du kuru kuma bababa. Amambam babaka bababa. When Einstein, the most important mind in the whole world, he is saying, the most important thing in this world, though, is questioning. And that is exactly what we have been deprived of. And we are saying, why are we not developing? Because all the people who are supposed to be bringing development are in churches, keeping quiet, not questioning anything. And if you don't question, you will not do discover. Questioning leads to discovery. And he said, curiosity has its own reason for existence. God created curiosity himself because of these things. Hey. Seven attributes of intellectual curious people. Intellectually. Seven attributes of intellectually curious people. You want to who wants to develop that in himself? Oh. You want that? 
I think we should not just develop in ourselves. We should propagate. Yeah, propagate and make sure that this goes to every nook no and corners of our country. Number one. Number one, intellectually curious people challenge the status quo. You, will you go into your church and go and challenge the status quo? Who are you? <laughs> Who born you? <laughs> will you go to your politician, to your, even to your dad or to your mom and challenge the status quo? Will you go to your village and challenge the status quo? They will change you out of town. Everybody will be against you. But until we learn to do that, and until that becomes a part of our culture, we will remain in a dark continent. This is the reason why we are a dark continent. Because we are under the captivity, under the darkness of paganistic worldview. Number one, intellectually curious people challenge the status quo to help create new breakthroughs to break away from the malice and inertia of novel gazing and silted thinking that plagues many organizations. And a whole continent, and a whole nation. We are plagued, not because we are caused, because of fathers and mothers and grandfather planted something, generational or something, causes and... <laughs> Because intellectually we are not curious and we have remained in the, in the, in the status quo. We've done challenging. Oh, they will kill you. Oh, you will die. Oh, what have you done? How old are you? Number two. So if you want to become an intellectually curious person, the first thing you must do is to cultivate in yourself the culture of challenging the status quo. And some of you, you don't have the even the, the boldness to do that. You don't even have the boldness to do that, some of you. You don't have the boldness to do that because you're always afraid. Status quo. Mm. And that's one of the reasons why I came ag out against my all my friends mm. in Pentecostalism and in religion. Mm. Because I must teach the next generation, I'm old, I'm getting old, I'm 50 something years old. I'm getting old very soon. And I don't want to leave this world the way I made it. I must teach people to challenge the status quo and give a legacy to people. Don't leave the world the way I found it. Make it a better place. So I came out to challenge the status quo to show to the whole world and the next generation of people who are coming after me that, look, this is the way to live. Get out of the shell. Get out of the chains. We should challenge science. We should challenge everything. This Albert Einstein that we are talking about, he challenged uh, Isaac Newton. That's why he became who he became. Yeah. And later on, this uh, Steve, uh, uh, Stephen Hawking challenged him and also became great. This is greatness. You, if evolution and discovery is built, is dependent on your ability to challenge status quo. Right, yes, we will be right. It's still with daylight, you know. Number two. Number two. So write it for yourself. I want you to do something for me. That number one point of how to become intellectually curious person. The number one point is constantly challenging status quo. First of all, in your own life and in your own practices. Why am I even doing what I'm doing? And then later on in the society, in your own family, in your own relative, in the society that you live. Now, my question to you is this. Write down. Out of one to ten, let's say ten. Let's say 10 is where Pastor Sunday is right now. How, 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 you, you have not noticed that I, 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 I challenge status quo? Okay, let's say that is 10. Where are you? Yeah, I know my wife will be 9. <laughs> <laughs> so put your mark. After that, put the mark in your, in your notebook. Put your mark that right now I think I am on 10, I mean, out of 10, maybe 2, 3, 4, 5, 5 out of 10, 2 out of 10, 3 out of 10, so that you know what to work on. Be sincere with yourself, so that you'll be able to push yourself and work on yourself. You have to answer that now. Okay, number two point, number two condition for you to be intellectually uh, curious. Number two, intellectually curious people build high-performing networks 
not just things. They, inher the, they inherently understand people and what motivates them better than most. Stop. For you, if you really are somebody who is an intellectually curious person, the knowledge that you know, the truth that you know, will not keep it to yourself. You will create a platform. You will create. You will begin to influence a generation of people or a group of people to build a team or people that you influence, followers that you now begin to carry your values and your virtues and your and your belief system because what you know will not die with you if you are an intellectually curious person you want to impact others with that same ability so you right now the way you are put your point down you have to answer the question how much of how much influence do you give to people how much do you do, do you how, how what how, what networks are you creating what platforms are you creating? What teams are you creating to become carriers and movers of your, of your ideals and of the discoveries that you have discovered? You know, uh, 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 success, I know you, you do this very well. You have your platform. Tell us about what you have done. To, since you have discovered these things, since you met me and you have discovered all these things and you started growing, yeah, what are the things you have started to do Thanks, Jesse. Uh, there is, I think there's nobody in this hall that challenges status quo like, like, uh, like success. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you have not yet, if you are not yet on his blog, go and read this article. I beg you, Take, give us the name of your blog. Um, you know, and it's it's mind blowing. So, uh, my blog name is Success so I'm a faculty the WordPress. No, no, you got what I say. I see that everybody comes from the village. How would they know what I say? Success. One, one, one by one now. Huh? Success, Olayemi, O L A Y E M I, Fakolade. No, 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 no. They are not so the Success, all one word. Success, Olayemi, O L A Y E M I, Fakolade, F A K O L A D E. Yes. If I were you, I would just change it to D S A. You know some. Uh, <laughs> Yes. Some you know, abbreviation like that. Yes, we are building a website now. And then and then put the so big WordPress. one. Com. Yeah, and then put the big one somewhere. Yes, yeah. we are building a website for. Audio. Yeah, make it simple for people. Yes, you are no more going to be among the Yoruba people <laughs> who are understanding your subject. Yeah, we are building a website. So now. tell us the title again. Success Olayemi O L A Y E M I Fakolade F A K O L A D E. The WordPress.com. The Cameroonian is struggling now. <laughs> <laughs> WordPress. WordPress. Uh, yes, that's come. We are building a website to be much easier. Uh, so, um, w one of the things that I began to do was to really, like um, Jesse said, I was challenging myself. I was beginning to question myself, question things that I because I was, my background was very, very bad because I grew up immersed in all of these things. So I began to ask questions and um, most of what I was discovering, most of what I was now beginning to hear from all these teachings were directly against what I'd known before. So I had to come out, I began to voice out and uh, one of the things I do so well is also, of course I write. So I began to write articles, a, a lot of articles about um, many of these things, I, everything about heaven, about prayer, Everything question I everything. To, I had to question everything and uh, bring down my conviction. Bring down my, I had to go back into history to study uh, what philosophers had taught, what historians, what the Bible has said. I had to compare a lot of sources because I didn't just want to believe what, because somebody said it. It wasn't enough for me any longer. One source wasn't enough any longer. So I had to compare all of this together and that was why I was writing. Um, all of those things uh, uh, that I was writing at the time. I had to write uh, articles, I had to write books, uh, resources about um, these topics. And um, of course, I also create other platforms now, even in my professional life, where I have to challenge things because now I'm into research. So right now I'm creating like a, also a PhD project where I also challenge some, um, some dogmas in my profession that have been there, you know, concerning management and policy in, in the management of healthcare. 
So all of these things, they are very, very interesting. And it's quite, in fact, just while I, we finished this session in the afternoon, and I went upstairs and just opened my mail, I just saw another email that dropped in where they are inviting me for a professional interview because they wanted to get my mind on these things that I'm talking about, about <laughs> policy. So, and everything is coming out from the fact that I'm questioning, I'm questioning things. So the experts want to know, and two, two professors are on the board that are going to be on that interview. And they, they want to know what is it, why, why are you asking this question? What is it that you are challenging? And, you know, it's quite interesting for them. This is substance in what that this is That is intellectual said. curiosity right there. You see the way it works and the way it opens the world to you? And this, yeah, these are pro uh, professors from what universities? University of Chester. That's in England. In England. Even though you live in Ukraine. Ukraine, yes. They found him out from the whole of Ukraine. Yeah. When you begin to have intellectual curiosity, the world opens up to you. So you have uh, your plat well, you have your Facebook page. Tell us Facebook. all the platform that you are using to so I have people. a Facebook uh, page. Um, my Facebook is Yemi Success. Yemi Y E M I. That's simpler. Yeah, I made it simpler. Yemi Success on Facebook, and then Y E M I. Y E M I Yemi then Success. One word. One no the space Yemi and Success. Okay. Yes, and uh, my um, blog. Um, name I already gave that success olayemi faculty dot wordpress dot com and um, of course my research projects and all of that right now one of the things I'm creating I'm creating a whole website that will be f totally focused on just challenging the dogma of uh, etsk management totally in uh, so I'm creating a whole website different website for that project all alone born out of my PhD research so the whole idea. The whole idea now is that all of us should have our own platforms or networks or, yeah, you know, or websites or programs or television programs. Anything you want to do, have some platform like MyOI is doing. Have some platform and MyOI is challenging status quo big time. So that if you really, you have the, you have a product. You have a result, just like we told you in the afternoon. If you are not having any result, you have not really, you are not intellectually challenged yet. When you are intellectually challenged, you will be bringing out product. Okay, number three. Number three. Yes. Intellectually curious people. That's number three. Intellectually curious people are empathetic, and draw out the best ideas from each individual, rather than. Oh, sorry, sorry. Okay. That was uh, number two, but it just continuation. continuation yeah. Yeah. Intellectually curious people are empathetic and draw out the best ideas from each individual. Rather than fit a person to, to predefine roles, they create roles around the unique strength of each individual. You see, the, and that, is, I want, what, that also explains to you why people in our churches don't entertain questions. They don't entertain and other people's opinion because they are not intellectually stimulated people. They, are, they don't have intellectual integrity. They, don't ha they are not intellectually curious people. Because even if our pastors and co and our geos are the intellectually curious people, they will be interested in knowing all these people that are sitting in What are they thinking? Mm. All these people that are following me, what are they? Every one of them should have an original idea now. That's what I do here in my church, in our church here. I, I give platform to every individual in this church. You have to express to me. In fact, I push them. I, I chase them. I say, you have to have an idea. You have to have something, a thought that I don't have. Are you not a human being on your own? God created everybody unique. You must be doing something unique. You must have some unique idea that I don't even have. Because you, you have, your DNA is not my own now. Your eye, something is not my own. Your spring, fingerprint is not my own. So there is something you are carrying that I cannot even assess. And I must, I'm here to help you discover that. But leaders who don't, who rather say shut up and don't have it, it just tells you that they are not intellectually free. Okay, number three. Number three, intellectually curious people actively engage and seek to build careers of the people around them, not just for the people within their teams. Hmm. They actively engage and seek to build careers of the people around them. You see? 
That's exactly what the church is supposed to be doing. Can you imagine if the, you remember, I don't know, maybe some of you have heard before, that I always say I'm a ladder. Mm. Anybody that comes around me, I'm a ladder for you to get to where you want to go to. Or I'm a bridge. Ride through me. Ride on me to get to where you need. That is what, that is a sign for you of an intellectually stimulating person, as, as, of an intellectually curious person. If someone is as in, really intellectually curious, you will become a ladder. You are not afraid that people will use you. You rather want people to use you. Why? Because you want to engage everybody around you. You want to stimulate everybody around you. You want to engage them and help them to come to their full potential. Help build their calling. You know, help them build their calling. Help them fulfill their, their calling. Everybody around you, you want to push everybody to maximize their potential. That is what it means for you to be to be an intellectually curious person. But our country, even if you are if you are on the ladder on your own, you are they will pull, they will pull you down. We must change that culture. Because that is the paganistic culture there. But the kingdom of God, you want you cannot love people without loving God. You want to love people, invest in people. Give, become a platform to others. That's what it means to be a Christian. Become the platform. Use your platform. How did I, how, you know, you have had the story of how we created 300, 200 millionaires in three years. Because anybody that comes, if you come, we help you to become a millionaire. The condition is that you must, within a year, take 10 people around you and share, share with them. If you don't share with them, we'll kick you out of the club. Anything you know, you must share with everybody willingly. That is what Christianity is. And that's what I'm doing. If you've studied me, if you've been watching my program, I don't demand anything from you. I don't need anything from anybody. You don't need to give me anything. You don't need to go for it. But I'm giving everything I know to you. Why? Because that's how the kingdom works. That's what the kingdom of God is supposed to be like. Can you imagine if all pastors in Nigeria would understand this? And be going to just empower and stimulate and raise up everybody. We will change that country overnight. The future belongs to the curious, the ones who are not afraid to try it. Stop. The future belongs to the curious. Can you imagine if we could raise this intellectual curiosity among our people? Where would the future belong? The future will belong to Africa. If the future belongs to the future, I mean to the curious, and we make our people intellectually curious people, Africa will control the future. That's why I say this kind of subject must be introduced in all primary, secondary schools and universities so that everybody will be intellectually curious to the degree that they will control tomorrow. That's one of the best things we could do for the next generation. Please read again. The future belongs to the curious, the ones who are not afraid to try it, explore it, poke at it, question it, and turn it inside out. Now, some people are watching now and joining us on the, in Facebook or wherever, and they are thinking, ah, we think we are a pastor. Why, why are you not using Bible? No, no, no. I said, this is not the religious HMTO. If you want religion here, go to your church. <laughs> <laughs> right here, I want to develop human beings right now. Religion has its time. There is yeah, time for everything. Yes. Don't just make everything religion yes. on my head, yes. not on my watch, okay? Yes. Number four. Yeah, number four. Intellectually curious people are risk takers. They are entrepreneurial but not rash. They promote experimentation, often testing the boundaries of possibilities without fear of failure. Okay, I will come back to this. Let me go back to number three. This number three, I want to, you to write down, write a question for you. How many people are you engaging? or discipling, or helping to come to fulfillment. Who are you investing in right now? Are you helping anybody to attain their maximum? Because number three is intellectually curious people actively engage and seek to build careers or calling of people around them. So out of the people around you, who are you building? Who are you investing in? We are not talking people of people within your own family. We are not talking of your family members. So the people who are not related to you. How many people are you investing in? How many people are you giving something to for free? You know, can you imagine how many number of people come to my website, my, to my page and say, Ah, Pastor, you must have a reason. Why are you doing this thing? You mean you are just doing this thing for free? Ah, 
No, maybe you want to go to Nigeria, come to Nigeria and pull down other people's churches. You want to pull down their names so that people, you will come and do church and people will come to your church. You know, that's what they're thinking. Or maybe you want to just spoil every other person's name so that, uh, you know, people will bring their things to you. I mean, they cannot believe it. And they're supposed to be Christians. That is Christianity. When you invest in people that don't, will not even say thank you to you. So I want you to give, if you're not to be sincere, I want you to be sincere, all of you. In the opposite that, number three, write down there, how many people are you discipling? Are you impacting? Are you investing in? Consciously. Maybe zero. Maybe one. Maybe two. If zero, then write your target. Within the, the, before the end of the year, I want to influence 12 people, 10 people. So, Maya Wai is smiling because she is influencing okay. Andres now. You are investing your life, your time into some people. Who are you investing in? How many people? Not the name, but the number. Make it a goal in your life. Become a source. Become a giver, a life giver. Become a resource center all by yourself. That is what intellectually curious people do. Okay, number four now. We'll go back to number four. Number four, intellectually curious people are risk takers. They are entrepreneurial but not rash. They promote experimentation, often testing the boundaries of possibilities <laughs> without fear of failure. Okay, good. Now, the, next, the question for you here is, how much a risk taker are you? Are you, are you bold enough to venture into new things? Okay, let's, give, let's go again by the uh, by 10, by the, what, a, what is it, level 10, what is it level, was it Mark? Or? Scale of 10. Sca by the scale of 10. So if you go by the scale of 10, 10 being the maximum, how much of a go-getter, risk-taker are you? How much willingly are you ready to engage new things? To try new things. How willing, how passionately are you about stepping out of your comfort zone, looking for new experiments, new ventures, new terrains, pushing yourself out of 10. Put your mark, and then if your mark is not good enough, give yourself a target. Write it right now. Don't wait till you get home. And then you work on yourself later on. Write something down for yourself. This will engage you. This will help you to become who you need to become. Okay. At the same time, they have short memories. They are quick to move on the next idea when something does not work. But you know most people, when something does not work, they just they live on that, they linger on that memory. Ah, I've tried before. Oh, nothing worked now. I will not try again. Then you are not an intellectually curious people, person. Because if you're an intellectually curious person, you forget about your failure and you go and try another one. And for ladies, you ladies, I know that that's not very easy for ladies. Because ladies want security. Or you want, you know, to be predictable, predictability. But if you want, at, at least in maybe let, let the predictability be in the family or in your place, in your house, in your own territory. But when it comes to calling, when it comes to your calling, to your you know, area of influence and to life, be intellectually curious. And that means you have to have a short memory in regards to failure. So if, if you have failed in any area, don't dwell on it. Go and start a new thing. All of us will fail. That's one guarantee you have in life. You will fail in one thing or the other. But that failure should motivate you to want to try another terrain and to want to try another, you know, another venture. So uh, when it comes to... Yeah. So number five. Number five. Intellectually curious people ask the right questions to help cut through political fear, 
Fierdoms. Fierdoms, yeah. Fierdoms. Like, like, you know, like a cult. Okay. That's what we have right now in churches. Cult. Mm -hmm. To help cut through political fierdoms or strongly held legacy-driven points of view. So they ask the right questions, you see. Intellectually curious people ask questions all the time. So if we are going to say, out of the scale of 10, how good are you in questioning? How often do you ask questions? Not just from people, but even from yourself. You have to ask constantly question things. Question yourself. Question your motive. Question where you are. Question your environment. Question everything. So how apt are you in questioning? I'll put your mark on one to ten. If you are not good enough, put your target. What do you want to do to improve yourself? To improve on this. They are, they are outcome-driven and shape-winning perspective. Yeah, you want to get, you want to be, you want to do something. You want to win. You want to shape things. You want to shape the world. You want to shape your world. You want to shape your environment. That's why you are asking new questions all the time. Intellectually curious people. Number six, intellectually curious people promote openness of discourse. Ah. Now, do you people notice that each time I teach, I always call on all of you to share your opinion about it. Yeah. And that is what has been taken away from us in our churches yeah. and our culture. Because in paganism yeah. and in paganistic worldview, you don't question anything. Question. And that, therefore, no room for open discussion. Because you might antagonize them and you don't antagonize the gods. They don't regard you as equal. They don't regard you as children of God. They don't regard you as royal priesthood like them. But then you must become like that. Every one of us must become like that. We must not follow that tyrannic lifestyle and leadership style that has been given to us by our parents. Oh, you don't allow your children to question you. You don't allow your uh, friends to question you. You must be open f that you yourself become, you know, accessible. And you must, you yourself must be open to other people to question your motives, to question your actions. So intellectually curious people promote openness. So now, the question for you is, I want you to answer that on the scale of 10. How much do you personally, you, maybe you are criticizing others, but we want to know, for you to be sincere with yourself, how much are you open to the promotion of openness and discourse, open discourse, that people will query you, question you? How much are you open to that? How much do you practice that? How much do you let people question you, query you? How much do you as, as, uh, 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 allow people to properly discuss with you and discuss the, any topic with you? Give yourself a mark on one, on 1 to 10. And if you are, the, the mark is not good, tell yourself and write your decision to improve that. The other one. Oh, sorry. No, you did. No, after this. Uh, okay. One, one of the secrets of life is to keep our intellectual curiosity acute. Ah, oh, you see? People know these things. Who said that? William By Leon William Phelps. Leon Phelps. American author, critic, scholar. And speaker. You know, people know this. This is one of the secrets of life. And this secret of life is what they gagged in Africa. To be intellectually curious. To them, a good idea is a good idea, regardless of where it comes from. A bad idea is a bad idea, regardless of where it comes from. You see, so they, they just want to have new ideas. And so they welcome discourse. They welcome, you know, discussion all the time. Because they are looking constantly for new ideas and fresh ideas. Number seven, intellectually curious people are effective at combining dreams with details. They are doers, not just thinkers. <laughs> so they are not just dreaming, they are not just dreamers, but they are 
they, they are good in details and they do it. So that, that's one area you have to mark yourself as well. One on the scale of one to ten, are you a dream, dreamer or you are a doer? Are you, do you just philosophize about things, talk about it, or you really get to bring it to a, to a doing place? Don't just be a thinker or a dreamer, become a doer. Did you know someone in your organization who displays a few of these attributes? If so, then observe them, get to know them, learn from them, emulate them, and see your career and your success soar. That's the advice for all of us. I have no special talents. I am only passionately curious. Who Albert said that? Einstein. <laughs> If, if intellectual curiosity is the secret of Albert Einstein, we must take it to Africa. We must take it to Africa. Et absurd, huh? Okay, video. Okay, let's see one of my videos that I spoke about, I talked about maybe 12 years ago or 15 years ago. This video here. Are you share go and share the message send it to your children send it to your to young people that you know in your life or people in africa let's set our continent free this is the challenge and one of the questions i'm going to have for you people is how can intellectual curiosity bring about or facilitate development and freedom on the african continent you think about it while we watch the video meanwhile the video how can this topic, intellectual curiosity, facilitate development of Africa? Or, you know, bringing civilization to Africa, development to Africa, economic, intellectual, technological. How can this topic actually help bring about that development? Riveta, let's go ahead and watch this video. Zvuk, don't you? Even the best of us, we know less than 5% of them. Brothers and sisters, as we come, 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 as Possibilities in God da are kjenne, limitless. Da vi vi kjenne at våre muligheter i Gud er ubegrenset. We will know we cannot be stopped. Vi vet at de kan ikke stoppes. We will know really what God said that everything is possible to even that believe it is true. Og vi vet at det er sant at når Gud sier at alt er mulig for dem som tror, da er det sant. But as long as we lack knowledge, men så lenge vi mangler kunnskap, we suffer. So we will eat. Satan comes and takes advantage. Satan comes and takes advantage. Where there is knowledge, there is light. That means that God has to be there. There is knowledge. There is light. God's kingdom is rules where there is light. Guds rike hersker og regjerer der hvor det er lys. Where there is knowledge, der hvor det er kunnskap, deliverance comes. Så kommer befrielsen. That is why it says in John 8, 32, derfor står det i Johannes 8, 32, that you shall know, at dere skal kjenne, the truth, sannheten. And the truth, og sannheten, shall set you free. Skal sette deg fri. So knowledge, så kunnskap, is the light that brings deliverance. Er lyset som ringer befrielsen. The truth is always there. Sannheten er alltid der. God's opinion is always there. Guds mening er alltid der. But until you know it, men inntil du kjenner, that truth will never take effect in your life. So we'll all have that sign for working in the place. Says add to your faith knowledge. So lay to the truth. Add to your faith knowledge. Lay to the truth. Add to your faith. Lay to the truth. It is not an advice. That is not a truth. It is a command. That is a falling. This is how the kingdom operates. This is a principle of the kingdom. This is a principle of the kingdom. 
concept is a is a precept you must add to it that a begrepp that a princip du måste lägga till det saved you must seek money no are the french so the for you not to live in defeat for det så inte ska leva i det för det är not to take an advantage of you for det är inte så att du ska ta för your family not to be destroyed för att din familj inte ska ödeläggas not to be destroyed för att inte du ska ödeläggas for you not to live in depression för att inte du ska leva i depression for you not to live in deception för att inte du ska leva i förföring you shall add something to your faith så ska du lägga något till din tro det är inte något att du är fräsch du måste söka och lägga till kunskap till din tro 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 Så det är rums där. Så det är det sådana. Everything you don't know. Allt som inte du vet. Is killing you. Det är killing you. Det dräper dig. What you don't know. Det du inte vet. Is killing you. Det dräper dig. What you don't know. Det du inte vet. Is killing you. Det dräper dig. What you don't know. Det du inte vet. Is killing you. Det dräper dig. What you don't know. Det du inte vet. Is killing you. Det dräper dig. Did you like the video? Go to Smart and Relate. That is. Uh, I think that is. Norwegian, Norwegian language. <laughs> yeah. So uh, you thought it's Russian? No, I don't speak in English here. When I'm speaking, I only speak in Russian. Yeah. So that is when I was in uh, Norway. So please answer. Who would like to answer the question? Give the microphone to them. The question is: How can intellectual curiosity help liberate Africa? Anybody want to answer that question? Now, if you don't answer, then I'm going to have to ask all of you to stand. Until all of you sit, you will not you will not answer. Okay, stand up, everybody. And until you answer, you will not sit. Sorry. <laughs> Anybody who wants to answer first will take the microphone first. Okay, Rosalind wants to. Is it on? Bring development to Africa. Mm -hmm. um, if we start asking questions and seeking to develop ourselves through self studies, not just focusing on what we learn in classroom, I think we'll be able to discover so many things. We'll be able to impact on the life of the young people too to do the same thing and um, we'll be able to be uh, to bring solutions to our society and also leave a leave a legacy when our generation pass away of just like what pastor success teach us about creativity when we start thinking about how can i live and influence my society then it will also lead us to start thinking of developing ourselves, thinking of doing self-research, uh, doing new things. And I think if um, just 10%, as you said, of yeah, African if people you go, will do that. If you look at the seven points yeah. that you have, take one of them one by one, for example. I ah, yeah. Maybe one person can talk about it. You, you are good. You are good. <laughs> so you, and how can that particular point, if it's expansionated on and developed, help bring about freedom to Africa. Any other person want to talk? Once you have spoken, you can say. So for um, intellectual um, curiosity. By the way, this is Shioma. For people who uh, are in Nigeria, she is the one that are distributing all my books there. And for people who have been on the platform, you'll be hearing Shioma Nigeria, Shioma, Shioma, Shioma. She is the one here in this beautiful dress here in front. So you recognize her from now, I hope. So, um, intellectual curiosity is going to help make us to challenge the status quo. We'll start asking questions, questioning everything. Um, Africa um, is still a dark continent today because we have people that are not asking questions. Right. So, if everyone begins to challenge the problems, you know, the reason why we are not developed today as a nation, um, sorry, as a continent, 
that would cause people to see themselves as um, taking, they will start taking responsibility for the, you know, different areas that um, the question, the problems that need to be addressed. And, um, you know, individuals can decide to educate themselves, to begin to develop themselves, to get into research, and this will facilitate um, development. Excellent. Yeah, uh, for me, Basically, I, I wrote here in my note, um, just still in some time to write, I said um, that the, the paganistic worldview that um, has um, placed Africa where it is today, um, is, it's something that destroys, um, it's something that destroys curiosity. Um, well, I said that curiosity is one thing that would take um, I, said, I said, without curiosity, generations will continue to sink in that given worldview. I said, but curiosity leads to questioning. Questioning leads to knowledge, and um, and that knowledge leads to enlightenment, and enlightenment will eventually lead to civilization. So I want to take it through, I think, was it question, let me see. The one that talked about um, how much of a risk taker are you? Because right now, we discover that in Africa, to even question anything is like a risk. <laughs> it's, it's a big risk, and a lot of people are afraid. <laughs> while, while, while we're watching here, yeah, somebody sent me a WhatsApp message saying that um, I should be very careful. And I asked the question, why? He replied saying, I should, I should um, look around myself 360 degree whenever I'm walking or wherever I'm going. So I was like, so why? Why are you telling me that? And he's not responded. So the challenge we have is that majority of us in Africa, we are too scared. Superstitious. To, yeah, we are too scared to take, to take risk. Why? Because we believe that we place people so much on a pedestal that we think we cannot ask them questions. We cannot question deep-rooted um, traditional beliefs. Because I know when we're growing up, well, I mentioned the other day, time in the morning that we, in, in our village then, we had a, a god that people kind of referred to as Uri. And we kept asking our dad, who is this Uri? Because we only, we only know one god. And my dad kept, kept saying, oh, that's the God that the village worship and all that. I keep asking, is it different from this God that created heaven and earth? Because my dad wasn't really Christian. So they'll, they'll take, take, give you stories like, oh, he lives in, the Ori lives in water. He only comes out once, once in a while during the festive period and whatever. So we, I keep asking questions. Why is he living in water? <laughs> Why is he not living on land and all that stuff? But you see, today we have so much religious beliefs that what has actually trapped a lot of people, especially in churches, is actually fear. They are afraid to ask questions because they've told them, oh, if you question the man of God, if you touch the anointed, something will happen to you and you, and, and, and you might die. Or Because we heard testimony of how, for example, the church I used to go to, there's this testimony that, that keeps repeating over and over again. The testimony goes like this, that there's a lady who was almost dying, then they took her everywhere. They, there was no solution. Then finally, they brought her to this bishop, apparently which is the bishop of the church I was attending, and the lady now said, ah, sorry, that there was a day you were preaching, and I eased while you were preaching, and because of that, a curse came on me. So that testimony, whether it is true, whether it is not true, nobody knows, because nobody has seen the woman, Nobody have seen the video. Nobody have seen anything. But we just believe it. And has put a lot of fear into people. And because of that, people are, they consider it a risk to even challenge, like our sister said, to even challenge the status quo. So I think everything is uh, interlinked. But I can see that if we are not curious enough to begin to ask questions, starting from our own immediate environment, starting from our own homes, starting to uh, question our own fathers, our mothers, uh, our cousins, our uncles, or people we, we hold to high esteem, then it will be very difficult. But once we start doing that, we, 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 we begin to see that most of the things we believe are actually superstitions, and they don't have any basis. 
And that will make us to begin to look for alternative of how we can actually go past this deep um, religious belief that we have held. Beautiful. Um, in my view, I think to be able to help Nigeria um, out of um, our current situation, we need to encourage people to empower them to ask questions. We need to give, we need to reach out to people, the people in our sphere of, uh, the people in our sphere of life, we need to encourage them that they should challenge status quo, nothing will happen to them. Not they, they should not just take whatever anybody say to them just because it is an elder or a bishop or anything. Just ask questions. I, I know that they don't want us to ask questions because by answering the question we ask, that may reveal their foolishness or they might give themselves away through the answer. So that's why they don't want us to ask questions. But we should continue to encourage ourselves. If you want, really want to come out of this slavery, we need to ask questions. So we need to help ourselves. And um, we that have all this knowledge, we should not keep it to ourselves. We need to go out there and uh, help others, give them platform. Whatever we can do to assist them, let's do it. If you need to sponsor people, to come to HMT, the next one, do it. If you need to buy um, DSA books, just give it out to people. Buy it. Give it out to people. Just help them. I think by spreading this news, encourage people to go on YouTube, to read them, to download them, DSA messages, whatever you can do to assist people, just do it. So let's circulate the message. Let it go around. Let's set people free. And we will continue to work on ourselves as well. So like everyone else has said, I think a lot of the intellectual points should be like, in, they should be used in harmony rather than to be used as individual points. I think uh, challenging status quo is definitely something that everyone should do regardless of whether they have been any which shape or form, because in the end of the day, we're living in the we're we're living in the society in which we're living in. <laughs> we need to be able to challenge all the things that we say. What are you saying? <laughs> um, like we need to challenge everything that we're saying. Um, I think being a networker, talking to people, trying to understand exactly what's going on in the world, actually trying to com like create communities, talk to them. But we've got social media. We have the ability to not only communicate with the other side of the world. We've got the opportunity to just understand what's going on um with regards to like uh careers and the people like, i think most of what i'm trying to say i think most of them being a risk taker being um being faster to initiative maybe thinking about a uh, situation <coughs> to basically address common world problems is what is what we need to generally do i think there's and uh, one of the biggest thing that um dsa said was about being a doer rather than a because I think what happens is, and like what um, Precious was saying, that a lot of people are saying is like the greatest grave that the, like that goes down in the world is um, like I think the, one of the biggest dreams that have like the richest place in the world is in the grave mm -hmm. because people don't actually have the ability to achieve their dreams. They don't have the ability to maybe have the sense of um, understanding what it is to go through the process of um, actually following it. Like it's like success isn't supposed to be hard. It's supposed to go through like hardships and turmoil. And I think some people just don't understand it, but may over like through like maybe reading and knowledge and stuff like that, they can be able to um, change it and be better with it. Excellent. Thank you, DSA. I think uh, intellectual curiosity uh, will help Africa to be more focused, Methodol uh, methodological and uh, strategic in our approach to 
issues that affects our continent, to issues of planning, to issues of uh, also the, the way and the attitude we have towards solving most of the challenges that face us as a country. It gives us the opportunity to delve in depth into most of the things that have been keeping us bound and backward as a continent. It will help us to ask those specific questions that will assist us in providing solutions to those challenges that we have been facing these past centuries. And then trust us in the forefront of uh, the, new, uh, the new world that we are trying to create for our, con uh, our countries, our continent, and even us as individuals. Thank you. Um, I think how to develop Africa is um, when we ask questions, we you know, tend to find some loopholes in the, the leadership of the country or of the continent, um, such as the, well, the... Or the church or the family yes. everywhere. Yeah, we find, we find what actually is, we found out what is going on, what is going on wrongly. You know, in, in terms of the leadership, you know, of the country, the family, what is not working in, in order. And then um, to that, we also, we, by asking these questions, we actively engage people to build, to build up themselves, to build up um, uh, careers or whatever it is that will actually build up a country or nation or family. That is what happens when we ask questions and we engage people. Beautiful. Um, okay, so um, the question is, how can intellectual curiosity facilitate development and freedom in the African continent? I think um, if you look, for instance, on the point number six, it says promote openness of discourse. Mm -hmm. And that basically just doesn't exist in Africa where people are open to question, especially taboo topics that are just not spoken about, especially when, when you look at female topics, female issues. Things are not really being discussed because they're considered taboos and people are not really open to answer questions about these things and that's why there are still diseases that exist and that could be cured because there exist de remedies that exist for these um, diseases but because there's no openness in discussing these things, especially in villages and smaller c towns. There's still issues prevailing in Africa. And if this openness of discourse is being promoted and cultivated in Africa, these things will be resolved. Good. So that would, as an example. Good. Thank you, sir. Um, I don't really want to touch where every other person has touched. I like to give my answers from my personal experiences or case. I use myself as a case study. Yeah, let me just go to the family. We've been talking about Africa, Africa, but I believe we can start from family. From family, then we can also start going. It's a baby step to build Africa. Like when, we, when I was growing up, I, I had this mindset that if you're not in the classroom, you're a nobody. When I, I heard a technical school, I thought it's meant for these houseboys. Then when you see you're going, for, going to commercial school, I thought it was meant for house girls, housemaids, because they are the ones that goes, go to school after you must have come back from school. So while we were growing up, um, my immediate elder brother, wasn't uh, that intelligent when it comes to 
using his brain, but with his hands, he was so skillful, and technically he was so sound. He could sit down and fix anything in the house. He was at the age of five, four, six, all the toys my dad was buying, he was fixing them. He would put an um, electric bulb together, you know, at uh, primary four, and he was working. For me, I thought he was not going anywhere because the attention wasn't on him, it was on me. My dad, my parents would always tell him, look at your immediate younger sister, the way she's smart in school. So they, they actually use mouth to discourage my elder brother. It's now that I'm growing, knowing what life is, with this topic you are teaching, it took me back to what happened when we were growing up. To me, I didn't see that technical ability in him. Nobody saw it in him. And now this thing now brought him to laziness of mind. Today he's not even in, in school. He didn't even do well in school. Technically he's not also doing well. So my point is if we could start from crash because it's been a, it's been there in my spirit to start teaching children, especially in Nigeria, a lot of them must have been taken the way I thought while I was small that if you are not in the university you are a nobody. A lot of them have been discouraged when they see they are not heading to where you are heading to, they thought maybe they too are uh, disadvantaged in life. So I'm thinking to help Africa is to start from crash, to start teaching us, exposing us to all these things. Thank you. In church they say praise the Lord. <laughs> so the the, 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 go back, go back. Yeah, yeah. the question the question is um how can intellectual curiosity accelerate development in Africa? Um, I'm, I'm just going to emphasize on one vital or crucial point. I think we need to start, f um, we need to eradicate the spirit or the mindset or mentality of um, egocentrism. Is killing us in Africa. Egocentrism is killing us in Africa, both in the church and outside. I think that's the um, the the, um, the number one, to to my um, understanding. That's what we need to tackle first, because if we don't deal with egocentrism, we won't be able to. Um, because if you if if you if we start from oh let me start from me if I if I if I'm able to discover my potential or I'm able to develop myself. So it's past me now, it's not about me. It's about the people. So I think in Africa, uh, we've been programmed like robots to focus on ourselves. So we too much into ourselves and if we are too much soaked into our own personal achievements and ambitions, how are we going to um, be concerned about the development, you know, where we live, the society, the development, where we, um, the development of the state. So as long as my road is okay and I'm comfortable, I don't care what's going on in the state. I don't care who's suffering or starving, and that's um, that's been egocentric. So that has to be eradicated. <laughs> so that that had that that has to be eradicated. I don't I don't know if I'm beautiful, beautiful. Um, the contribution I'll make is concerning the point three, which is about building the career of others around us, and investing in other people. And um, I think this one area where Africa still has a long way to go, because oftentimes we are not open to um, share our secrets with other people. So the, there's this joke that says that when they asked a billionaire from the U.S. how he made it, he said he made it through real estate. And then another man from Europe, he said um, he was into business or whatever. And then when they asked a billionaire from Africa how he made it, he said it was God. Mm -hmm. So oftentimes we don't want to share <laughs> the secrets with people. And if our aristocrats, our elites, will be open to sharing, to building, like DSA said, that uh, when he was teaching people how to be millionaires, everybody had to commit to raise other people. 
So if in Africa we also we commit, if everybody we commit to share what you know and the secret of your success or how you made it, then um, I think we we'll have a rapid a, a society that's going to develop very rapidly, very fast. Beautiful, beautiful. My um, take is um, taking responsibility as individuals as well um, to imbibe the uh, the culture and the belief system or the system of intellectual uh, curiosity ourselves, and as we and also develop that. So as we're developing it, also share that with others, because uh, one of the points that Dr. Success made and Dr. Sunday made in um, the slide, the number three, which is um, to be able to teach other people or you know share what you know with other people. You know, if we go with uh, scripture being the light of the world, how are we the light of the world? So if we imbibe this belief system of uh, intellectual curiosity and we use it, we make it a lifestyle of daily and then teach other people, I think uh, commitment among everybody here or responsibility to take it upon ourselves would help Africa as well because individually we are Africa. Africa is not. Um, it's individual people um, that are, we, you know, as we are here now, most of us are African. So that's one way of, of doing it. So imbibe it in yourself and then uh, teach other people. And also allow other people to be curious with you. You know, don't, um, you know, if, if, you, if you do something uh, or you believe in something, you always have to also allow other people to, um, to, to ask you questions. So from questioning, I think a lot of us as well, we don't like to be questioned because we grew up in, we grew up in the culture where um, we're not allowed to ask others questions. So also be uh, mindful that we don't like to be asked questions and allow other people to ask us questions, uh, change our own mindsets as well. I think that's one way. Excellent, excellent. Thank you so much. Well, uh, I know that uh, they said the game will be starting from Nigeria in the next what? Three minutes? Few minutes. In the next eight minutes, they said. So we are going to give the chance and the place for people at home to go and watch. So go and share this message, everybody. Share, share, share. And then we'll be back tomorrow morning to be with you. But the people here, I don't know how you are going to watch this thing. I don't know where how they show it, where they show it. But, you know, you take, huh? You know, for you have to find the channel where they show it, how they show it. It's on where? Do you know the place? You know? Oh, okay. All right. Thank you, guys. See you tomorrow.